there everyone, this is Lucky 7 dx welcome back to Let's Play Okami Den. In the last episode, we uh, got ourselves a cherry bomb after we put on a fireworks show and made a little girl named Little Girl because I don't know how to say her name pretty happy. Um, but in this episode guys, well, this is actually the episode where we're going to, um, well, we're going to get a little glimpse of the next area at the end. Um, you know, a little teaser of the next area to come. And also, by the way, a demon who's actually a merchant who's going to sell us stuff. Yes, that happens in this game. Actually, quite a lot. You'll see a lot of these uh, merchant demons. I don't know why, it's just kind of weird, but they're, they're here, and they sell stuff that we can technically buy. Um, over, also over here, well, like, uh, th um, the first two-thirds or so of this episode, we're going to be doing some side questy stuff, because, you know, I'm trying to do 100%. The whole point of this game is to do, you know, a video walkthrough sort of thing, uh, just to show all these crazy secrets, because they're sort of out of the way. For example... Hannah Valley hasn't been open up until this point, where suddenly it's mysteriously open without anyone saying anything at all, actually. It, it just is magically open now. So, um, I mean, A, you wouldn't know to come back here, and B, why would you come back here? Because there's, like, nothing to get here, you'd think. But there's actually a monkey who you can recruit to the village. Now, animals don't count for the people total, which, well, the people total will, uh, be what helps build the shop up and, uh, make it, you know, um sell better stuff basically but the animals will help you recruit other people uh, well they'll they'll be part of recruiting other people or other sorts of little mini side quests or treasures of some sort so it's still worth recruiting the animals plus you get praise for it plus you make your village a happy place i'm not complaining um but there, I, I missed i can't believe i missed one of those curse zones like i, I know i was talk, completely talking about something else but there's a curse zone right there and I, i'm still missing curse zones in freaking shinshu field they're just everywhere just this this whole field is really big. I, I like it though. Shinshu Field's pretty cool. Anyway, bunny rabbits! Yes! Um, now that we have the cherry bomb, we can go and get a bunch of these uh, caves, including getting another holy icon, which now completes Mika's holy icons. We can go, we'll still go stop by him in a little bit to go give him uh, his stuff back and get some praise. But bunny rabbits living in a cave! Because bunnies, they now live in caves for some crazy reason. I don't know. Um, but you can't feed bunnies, you can't feed any animals in this game, unfortunately. Um, they're all, um, it's, it's like, it's one of the, uh, yet another one of those things from Okami that was taken out. Um, but they're there, and they're cute, and so on and so forth. Now, I know a couple people were like, dude, you're spoiling the future brush skills by talking about them, but, like, um, over there, for example, the pile of leaves. We can't get that until we get wind, obviously, because you need wind to blow leaves. That, that just seems pretty self-explanatory. Ipso facto, which I've been using that phrase a lot for some reason, ipso facto, but ipso facto, there must be a wind power at some point. Seeing with the ice, there must be a fire power. I'm not really spoiling because it's just kind of sort of obvious. In fact, somewhere in Shishu Field, I don't remember if I actually show this off, but there's a dandelion as well. And dandelions take the place of, if you remember from Okami, there were little trees you could bloom or something like that. Um, that'll give you praise. Uh, these basically take the place of them where they're just little dandelions that you blow up wind instead, and then they give you praise. Uh, which we won't be able to do any of those later. I'm not, I don't think I even show off the dandelion because it's just, it's not really necessary. Because we can't do anything if yet. We need the wind. Ipso facto, there's a wind power at some point. I'm not telling you when, though, so that's not really spoilers. Um, plus, you know, if you play the original Kami, you, you know all about it. Anyways, so we actually complete Masterpiece 1 of this. We get ourselves a revenge slip. Revenge slips... Okay, well, basically, they're really good at, um, also you get to see the picture, um, which is kind of cool. But, um, they, they basically, um, I'm not sure exactly how that works, I've never actually used one before, but the, the text for it says that, um, it prevents you from, or it doesn't prevent you from taking damage, but it reflects damage back on the attacker, so it'll do damage to enemies that are hurting you. That seems pretty useful, but, um, at the same time, it sells for, like, 4,000 or 5,000 yen, and early mid game, you're pretty tight on money, and that extra 5,000 yen um, really would ha does help a lot in terms of getting um, the really good stuff early as you know as early as possible. So most likely, I'll probably end up selling it for the 5,000 yen, which I mean still makes it a good reward, I guess, because 5,000 yen is quite a lot in this game. But um, just I guess that heads up, I'm going to be uh, doing that. Anyway, we'll return the stuff to Mika in a little bit. First, there's a crane, and its wing has been broken, but um, because Basically, fever medicine can heal broken wings for some reason. What the hell sort of medicine is this? It heals fever and heals broken... What the... What the craziness? But this crane will be um, our other other villager we're going to recruit to Yakushi Village today. 
But however, um, while this one's pretty obvious and easy to get, the reward you get from it is not so easy. And if you do it wrong, it is um, one of the first cases of missable objects. Um, also, by the way, before you go to Agata Forest, make sure that you've gotten all this stuff from Cave of Nagi soon. Because we're about to, um, not too far from now, we're going to be reaching uh, one of those... Uh, well, it's not a point of no return, but it's a point of not able to return for quite a while. So, um, it's in your best interest, basically, to go make sure you get the back of the stuff from Cave of Nagi before it becomes permanently missable. Um, so, basically, we're starting to reach the point where we are starting to get, you know, permanently missable things. Um, and there's our little dude. Now, I'm um, going to do a little cut here. We're going to make ourselves our way over to Yakushi Village. Uh, because why not? Um... There's, I mean, there's a couple things we can do now that the crane is here and the monkey is here. Um, as you see, the um, a lot of stuff. There's a new house, a new hotel, and the shop is finally open. The shop is not going to be very useful now because we only have like um, two human characters. Uh, the one we recruited, the, the one from last time we get lost, and the crane technically counts as a human character, I believe. You'll see why in a little bit. Um, but basically, uh, well... The hotel's open now, so hello, old lady. Uh, there's really not much we can do. You get the hotel if you get the monkey, because the animals actually end up living in the hotel. A lot of the animals end up living in the hotel in this one room over here, uh, among other people. But the, um, you'll find the monkey that we recruited over here. He's still quite hungry, actually. But the, the, the reason why getting the monkey is good right now is you can get yourself an exorcism slip um, early on, which isn't really the most useful thing, arguably. But why not get it? I mean, I, I don't see any reason not to. Anyways, he wants food, but we're not going to give him food, so we're going to run this way and stuff and things. Um, we'll go visit the other, the new house, basically, after we go visit the shaman, because the shaman's pretty near the hotel, so we'll go there first. Uh, basically, just going to spend the, um, a little bit of time just wrapping up Yakushi Village. We're not going to be here for several episodes, so um, for those of you who are like, side quests, ew! Don't worry, the next, like, six seven episodes should be mostly plot related uh so you won't really have to worry about side questy stuff for quite a while anyway well besides you know just getting items but the, the most from the most part all the items um now are like well it's, it's like how they were you know before since you feel where they're pretty much just on the path of the main story anyway so i guess the way that works with comedy then is there's like usually you know there's a lot of um there's a lot of main story patches and then there's gonna be a few patches where we're just gonna do little side questy stuff here and there which, I mean, compared to Spirit Tracks, certainly, it's not really that long. Anyway, the, um, the Shaman only um, sells a bunch of interesting damaging items. I'll show those off at some point, but I'm going to save my money because I need my money for later stuff. I can't always buy this and show this late game, because late game, money is not an issue. You'll have more than enough funds late game. It's just early, middle, if you want to get all the good stuff, you're going to be pretty crunched on money. That seems to be how it is for most RPGs or any game that really involves money. Um, you know, it's your pretty crunched early middle game, but late game, you just are like, just freaking Scrooge McDuck taking baths and money. Baths. I said that word wrong. Anyway, very important because this item is missable, and really, you do want to get this item because it's, it, if you get, the, I mean, it's not, um, you, you'll see that it's not going to be one that, um, because I explained last time, it's not going to be one that's like, too bad if you miss it, but it's really helpful for you to get it now. Um, I'll explain why in a little bit, but what you need to do is not go upstairs. Listen to the game, don't go upstairs. If you go upstairs, um, you'll actually discover that that woman actually is the crane, and she'll be embarrassed by her secret being revealed and fly off and leave you with, um, a stray bead. Anyway, so what you need to do, and what I didn't really actually show, you need to leave the village. Go all the way out of Yakushi Village. This means go all the way back out to Shinshu Field. So walk past the flowers, and you know, walk past the old man, and walk through the flowers there. Walk all the way out into actually Shinshu Field, like, you know, the big giant field. Walk all the way out there, walk back in, and she'll be, if she's downstairs, you did it right. Talk to her, and she's going to give you a lucky bead. Now, what this lucky bead will do, or a lucky coin, not a lucky bead, you'll get a stray bead from the woman if you uh, screw it up. But if you do it right, you get a lucky coin. Now, like I said last time, these lucky coins are used for upgrading your items. We're going to need two of them in order to be uh, to upgrade the other two types of weapons we get. Um, now, we're going to be getting one. There's going to be one in the next area as well. But then after that, we won't be getting one for until the the, the next um, until the dungeon after the next one. So um, basically, if you want to be able to upgrade your items, you know, as soon as possible, you need to get that lucky coin right away, or else you're going to have to wait like you know a bit. And then. Um, the game gives you five pretty much in the first half of the game as well. So if you screw that up then, 
then you're going to have to wait a like, really long to upgrade your weapons to the third tier, which means, which is really bad too. So you want to try to get all the first five lucky coins because otherwise you're going to have to wait till pretty late game to upgrade your stuff, and that kind of sucks. Anyway, so moving on to the next area, although there's actually a secret over in this little cave as well, uh, just sort of teleports you up here randomly, and then there's also another cracked wall, so it's just a cracked wall inside a cracked wall, cracked wallception, I drew my bomb wrong. Come on, it's not too hard to draw a bomb. Bomb making, made easy. Oh, Chibi and Kuni, you guys are such terrorists, but we get a toy of Amaterasu. I don't know, getting toys of your mother. That's just kind of weird, but there's actually a hidden passage over here. And over here will lead us to our first Masterpiece Part 2. So look at that, we finished up Masterpiece Part 1 in this video, and we're already started on Masterpieces Part 2. Out of 5. So, uh, once again we're going to need another 10 to get that item. The second item is actually pretty good though, so uh, you'll, you'll see what we get when we get that. It's going to be a, a while. It's not going to be um, right away. We'll, we'll still take some time before we do that. But anyway, I got a forest. For those of you who have played Okami, right now you're about, you guys are probably like, Whoa, what the heck? This used to be a forest, and now it's like a giant watery pool. Well, actually what happened was it became extremely flooded, and it's also a curse zone. So... In the next few episodes, guys, we're going to have to solve the mystery of Ogata Forest and why it became a flooded mess. Also, this dude, um, he's going to give us our next item list because, well, you know, we just finished one or at the start of another one, apparently. There's going to generally be, like, one per area, so early on, you're going to find a lot of these item lists we're going to have to do. Um, however, fishing equipment. This one we're not actually going to be able to finish for a very, very long time, because there's one item, there's one of them that we're not going to be able to get until we, well, basically, um, this isn't the only time we're going to be in Agata Forest, and we can't do it until we come back to this place, so, basically, we're, it's going to be a long time before we can, um, finish his list, so, for those of you who play the game are like, holy shit, I can't fin I never finished the list, what the heck's going on, calm down, it's fine, you, you, you finish it later in the game, you don't finish it at this point in the game. Just gonna give my little story there. Anyway, I'm um, just to wrap up the episode. Well, we're gonna go ahead and just fix this area because curse zones aren't cool, and I'm not gonna let it just last here for a couple episodes. No, siree. We're getting rid of this curse zone now. We're just getting it out of the way. Just gonna get it out of our hair and then just good stuff. Anyways, um, pay attention to this man, by the way. He talks about a sacrifice um, for whatever caused the flood. Um, which, um, I think he said it was a, a giant fish or something that, ca that did it. So, um, keep that in mind. That's gonna be important in, a uh, well, in two episodes? Two episodes, I think. Anyways, so here's our, uh, Guardian Sapling. So you know what happens now. What happens now is a great divine intervention. Although, first, is actually treasures over here, so we're gonna get that one first. Um, so, it's actually Masterpiece Part 2. Part 2. Um, so we got two of those now. Not bad. We got collected three masterpieces this episode. That, that's pretty good, actually. Um, you don't use the. Don't make the mistake I do, where I always like try to make. I always try to um, do a bloom on it. No, you have to actually talk to it and activate the cutscene, then do bloom, or else it won't work. Kind of a bit picky, I guess. But here we go, guys. Ending the video with a great divine intervention, because that's how you do it stylishly. Um, so glowy stuff. But I don't. I don't know what you need to say, it's just such a cool little scene, I love the Great Divine Inventions, they're so cool, especially because this one has all the water just dancing, of course it doesn't even the flood though, so we're still going to have to solve the mystery of the flooded waters, and that's going to be our task for the next few videos as we solve the mystery of the God of Forest, consider this episode a teaser for what's to come, because believe me, this is where things start to change, this is where the game starts to... It, this is where stuff starts to, um, you're, you're gonna see. Stuff, stuff happens. Stuff gets really interesting this part of the game. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna explore Agata Forest next time, guys. This is Lucky70X, signing out. Um, stay tuned for more Okami Den. It's gonna be a good, merry old time. Actually, one of my favorite sections is coming up, or one of my favorite areas in the game is coming up, so, uh, you'll like it. So see you guys later.